morning. My name is Christina Border. So, the desire for recognition and craving to reward one's success internally or externally in the youth has shifted from no longer wanting a decadent, long-weighted, or satisfying dessert, but to a bland, monotonous, and conventional burger and fry meal as compared to these intricate um, awards awarded through the Olympics or these uh, non-personal and uh, in bulk participation trophies. This begs the question, to what extent has the implementation of participation trophies among adolescents in the United States in competitive activities influenced recognition standards, self-esteem, and increased extrinsic reward value? So the definition of a participation trophy is something given to children to participate in a sporting event but do not finish first, second, third place, or meet the criteria given by the corporation. So they are not normally eligible for a trophy. And this is frequently given, um, generalized with people from Generation Y and Millennials, as stated by the Washington Post. As you can see, these participation trophies often come in bulk as something you see in a Costco wholesale store. And they aren't personalized and are very cheap, as you can see, starting from $2.99. Um, as you can see in our local community today and around the United States, something that implements participation trophies is the YMCA, which promotes youth development for healthy living and for social responsibility. Um, one of their virtues stated on the website says they are sports, uh, do sports and recreational activities, and they promote friendly competition with like a lot of support and um, variety within the environment. And a lot of us probably started with our first sport at the YMCA, whether it was soccer, swimming, or basketball. And what it doesn't state on the website is that um, given to many of the children throughout elementary school, uh, all of them are awarded participation trophies, whether they were working hard throughout the sport or if they were just playing with butterflies on the field. Something you can see within psychology today is a uh, Pavlov experiment done by Ivan Pavlov in the 1870s, and this was where a dog was conditioned to salivate to the sound of a bell, then given food, rather than the innate reaction of salivating to the sight of food. And this can be seen in our society today as right here in this school, when we hear a bell, we are alerted to go to the next class. If we don't go to the next class, we'll get an extrin extrinsic punishment, such as a tardy, or an extrinsic reward, such as going to class, learning, hopefully getting better grades, and getting into a better college. In another experiment, um, in Zimbardo's 1971 Stanford Prison Experiment, different volunteers were awarded, uh, sorry, um, assigned to be prison inmates or prison guards. The, they took the positions over the level and took the authoritative position of actually the prison guards uh, saying nasty names to the inmates, and then the inmates ended up hallucinating and taking it way too seriously, so they had to cancel the experiment. This shows that as humans, we are creatures of conformity. So anything that's given to us, we, we, we feed into it. It's just part of who we are. So we are constantly given rewards for something we don't deserve. We're going to want that reward, whether we deserved it or not. Um, so basically defined by the American Journal of Psychology, an intrinsic reward is like a personal achievement, uh, personal growth, or sense of pleasure of accomplishment within oneself. An extrinsic reward is usually like something materialistic, like money, a participation trophy, or a reward. So many counteract the idea that participation trophies are harmful in our society, as stated by Dr. Grail Gross in the Huffington Post, who states that studies show children rewarded for good participation during an IQ test um, ask for a harder test next time, rather than students rewarded intrinsically, like by saying that they were intelligent, ask for the same test the next time followed. But actually, this chart disproves that, showing that intrinsic motivation and non-monetary rewards actually show better results rather than materialistic rewards. Also, as stated in the 1969 book of Psychology of Self-Esteem by Nathaniel Brandington, um, by the time millennials came around, many parents were mainly concerned with self-esteem and happiness for their children. Because of these attitudes, participation trophies became the cornerstone of um, youth sports since the 1990s. And this made the participation trophy industry making $3 billion a year and stagnantly increasing since. It's important to recognize self-esteem um, is not something conferred. It's mainly gained through taking risks and developing skills through this. As seen in the, Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, Alice, when she steps through the looking glass, she looks back at her old room and see, sees that it was very uninteresting compared to this new room. But the new room she's in is actually untidy compared to her own room. 
This displays that when looking at participation trophies, there's different perspectives. Some people believe intrinsic rewards are beneficial to one, and some believe that they aren't as beneficial as intrinsic rewards. Um, this can actually be counteracted by um, the 2014 Huffington Post stating, as a matter of fact of 2013, immigrants st started 430 businesses per, per 100,000 people, while native-born Americans started only 250 businesses. Although immigrants are only one-fifth of our labor force, they account for a quarter of the new U.S. entrepreneurs. Why is this? In other cultures around the world, they're mostly intrinsically based, which means they, just, they realize the importance of working within themselves to get out of whatever situation they're in. While in the United States, it's mostly based on intrinsic rewards and collaboration, meaning we use others around us to build ourselves up. Also, as stated by a notorious Myers-Briggs personality test, um, used on many job applications. The most common logarithm for this um, personality test is ISFJ, which with a WAFI of 38% of people score on this. Um, one of the components of this is actually recognition, meaning that innately humans crave recognition. But recognition can be healthy within itself. Um, obsessive recognition, always wanting something in return, is where it turns unhealthy. But using recognition in a healthy way to build ourselves up um, through hard times is, is normal, as seen in this job chart. And also, as a survey conducted um, by Yale's Amy Westenberg found that after a 14-year period, she followed 1,100 West Point cadets and found that people's mo their motive for attending the academy that was in in intrinsically um, rewarding, meaning that they joined the academy to build leadership skills, were actually more likely to graduate and succeed rather than people that join the academy for extrinsic reasons, such as getting more money or a better job. To conclude, it can be seen in the um, Buddhist religion where 387 million people follow that in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, that um, si the scientific perspective of materialism and external rewards and pleasures corrupt the human spirit and soul. And we should pay more attention to the energy and reality of a safe and conscious awareness. This can be taken into example with James Harrison from the Pittsburgh Steelers um, who took away his kids' participation trophies when they, he found out that they got awarded for something for not ever winning a game in their Little League football um, season. Therefore, if we feel something is wrong, we should stop, such as with participation trophies. And just because society is giving it to us does not mean we need to accept false success and hope. Thank you. I thank you. I do have two questions for you. Can you tell me uh, how your research question changed as you went through the research process? Okay, so at first, I based my research question mostly on, um, I was like, oh, it's going to most, extrinsic rewards are going to be more beneficial. Like, most of us have um, performed better when we have grades in front of us and want to perform better. But as stated in my presentation through the um, Meyer Briggs personality test, with the ISJR, it's actually seen that um, intrinsic rewards are more beneficial because um, they're like lifelong skills rather than something that comes and goes materialistically. Okay, and so what might be real world implications or consequences of all this? So, also stated in my presentation with the Myers-Briggs, that those personality tests are used on many job applications in our world today. So, um, by showing that one is more more reliant on extrinsic rewards, doesn't show true character and something one can build upon rather than intrinsic rewards show hard work and success within one. All right, cool, thank you.